What's up, guys? We are back with another Super 7 Ultimates Thundercats review, taking a look at a pretty interesting little wave here. It's a figure and it's a vehicle. We're getting a figure that has never been made before, and we're getting a vehicle that's never been made before, and they very much go together. So we are taking a look at Mandora, the Evil Chaser. Now, she, of course, comes in standard Ultimate-style packaging, so if you've got any Thundercats, you know what to expect here. Uh, it's a normal size box, too. Nothing oversized here. You've got the black slipcover with the Thundercats logo on the front. You've got the classic logo there on the back. Pop that slipcover off, and then you've got the figure there in the big window. All of her accessories, you've got that sort of white vintage LJN burst back there. Thundercats logo on the bottom. You've got some reaction-style artwork that we've seen used throughout the line on the back, as well as a bio for our Evil Chaser. But she's not complete without her vehicle, and this is what makes this wave very, very different. Not just a lack of figures, because we're getting the Electro Charger, too. So this is our first vehicle in the, in the line. Of course, the Thunder Tank has been in progress for a while now. It's coming pretty soon, but this is the one that made it out first, and I'm really excited to take a look at this just because it's something, I mean, it's something entirely different for Ultimates. It also comes in a very different style package. As you can see, it comes in a full-size window box here. So you've got the Electro Charger there in the big window, and then what's interesting about this box is that while we don't have any reaction-style artwork here, we get all of the renders all over this, so that's a big change as well. You still have some of that LJN callback with the colors, with the font, with that white burst back, back there as well. But I'm really, really happy with this. I do like being able to see the vehicle there. It would have been kind of cool at the same time to get maybe a full vintage inspired box that has no window, uh, but I think this is pretty nice too. And it's pretty premium because you can see all of it. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go out of the package, our Super 7 Ultimates Thundercats. Mandora, the Evil Chaser. This is this is a special one because it's it's yet another entry in the line that has never had a, a toy before. There's never been a Mandora figure. There wasn't one in the vintage line, and of course, you know we also get a vehicle to go along with her. We're going to take a look at the figure first, run through everything she's got to offer, and then we're going to take a look at her space bike, space motorcycle, uh, and see how they all uh, sort of hook up and fit together and how it all works. So this is of course a female Ultimates figure, which right then and there kind of tells me exactly what it's going to be like. And if you have Chitara and if you have Pumira, you probably have a pretty good idea of what's going on here. You've got some up and down on the head. It's not too good up, but it's actually pretty good down. We've got really good tilt, full rotation. It's just a ball peg. Arms out at the shoulder. The little collar piece is a softer plastic, so it allows her to go out. Up, still pretty far. I mean, it is, of course, going to get in the way, but it goes pretty far. Backwards, you've got a bicep swivel up there. Single jointed elbows gets us basically to 90. Hinges, rotation at the wrist. As is usually the problem here, though, the torso affords very little motion and movement, and I, I really just don't understand. I don't understand why they're, they're structured this way. This is really just a swivel. It very much reminds me of Pumira, except it's sculpted a little bit better. It looks like it fits on the figure a little bit better. It doesn't have any, like, you can see me moving it forward and backward, but it's not actually going to do anything. It's not going to give you any actual articulation, and there's nothing at the waist either. So she's just a upper diaphragm swivel. I've not really, as of filming this part, because it's all fresh, I've not really put her on the bike much yet, and I'm curious to see how this is going to work when she can't hinge her, her stomach forward. There's no ab crunch, so she can't move forward. I'm curious to see what that's going to do. Got legs that go out about that far, basically the splits. Kick forward all the way, backward a good bit. We do have a thigh twist up there. Single jointed knee. This is a really limited knee. It's not even 90 degrees and I, I fail to see why. I feel like this should be able to go much further back. There is some rotation there. Uh, we've got really good rocker and hinge down on those ankles though. So those are all right. She's, so she's pretty normal. I mean, the female figures in, in the line are generally worse off than the males just because of, I don't know, reasons, I suppose. She moves okay, very much in line with what you would expect if you've already got Chitara, if you've already got Pumira. Now, as far as the overall look and feel here, for the most part, I think this is a pretty solid looking figure. I do have maybe two two things that I'm going to gripe about, and then there's one kind of curiosity that I, that I 
Well, I accidentally discovered it by trying to see what's going on with some of some of this, I guess, armor up top. But of course, she is a female figure, so she is a little bit smaller. She's a little bit more slender. Well, not even a little bit. She's a lot more slender than like all the males. Lion, O, Panther, O, Tigra. They're big and beefy. The females are a little bit smaller, but I think I think the sizing and the overall scaling of this figure works pretty well. She's got a decent bit of paint on her. You've got all the purple and the red, or purple, pink, rather, and the red. And then you've got her uh, her holster over here. This was actually changed from the renders. This, I believe, was pink in the renders, which it was not accurate, so they fixed that. And I think for the most part, you know, the colors look good. She didn't have, you know, like bright hot pink or anything like that. It's kind of muted, kind of just, you know, rose pink, and that looks really nice. This collar piece up here is part of a very specific look for Mandora. So she's got two distinct looks in the show. One look is is this look. So the look that has like the, the collar, whatever you want to call it, the pauldrons, and this red thing, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. And the other look is with her out it. And I inadvertently found that they actually sculpted her in such a way that she could be both figures. I'm going to take the head off here real quick. So pop the head off. This isn't supposed to come off, but I broke it. Uh, it's just it's just a glued nubbin in there, so I can put it back on. But this is how she looks uh, with the with the original look. So like the the sort of swooping neckline there, and then this piece is a separate piece over top of it. It seems so. Maybe they're going to give us both somewhere down the road. Like you can sort of pry it up, and you can see she's got the the black sort of unitard thing going on up there. Which is pretty interesting. I don't know that I need to Mandora on my shelf. This is probably my preferred look when it comes to Mandora, but that's kind of cool. Uh, so, you know, if you wanted to, I guess you could try to make that other version. This red thing, I'm not so sure this is accurate. It, And, and I guess it's going to come down to what you're looking at, which frame, which episode, because in many instances, this thing is like a, it's just like part of her torso, like her, her shirt. And it looks like it's a zigzag, and it goes all the way down to the belt. Obviously, it's not like that here. And there are some instances I found where it does look really similar to this. But I thought it was just part of her shirt. I didn't think it was actually like an overlay or anything like that. I'll have to go back and do some more Mandora research. But, uh, yeah, this is definitely one of those things that's probably different from episode to episode. We do have some exposed skin on this figure. That's going to be a pain point for sure. Uh, it is unpainted. All the flesh is unpainted. And I feel like that's the one area, specifically the one area, where if they had just done some shading on this arm and on her face, I feel like she'd be, you know, even better. She's a pretty solid figure and she does look really good, but it would be so much better if this was just a little bit darker even. It just seems too... I mean, she's a light-skinned character to begin with, but it just seems too, I don't know, plasticky, if that makes any sense. Maybe dull it down in some way. The head sculpt, though, I think is pretty solid, if not for the fact that it has, you know, unpainted flesh plastic up there. We do have some painted lips, so that looks good. The helmet and visor, I'm really happy with. Paint is clean and crisp up there. That silver is super bright, super metallic, and then the paint inside the visor itself is very clean and crisp. And then, of course, you've got her shock of hair, the ponytail coming out. There are some alternate head sculpts for this figure. This one is specifically showing a ponytail compared to, like, a windswept look in the other ones. And I think the hair looks good. Nice, bright, and vibrant yellow. So she's a pretty solid-looking figure. I do have, of course, a couple of maybe concerns with her. I'm I'm really curious if we're going to see a different Mandora after what I found under this pauldron thing. And then I'm not so sure about, about this in particular because, you know, it just looks different in various instances. But otherwise, I think she's pretty solid. I do, however, I'm going to keep harping on it. I wish we would have a little bit of paint, just some hit of shading on this flesh. Now, as far as accessories for Mandora, she is pretty well stocked. She doesn't have, you know, a million appearances in the show, but she does have some very specific things. And then, of course, we have the Electro Charger, which does include stuff specific for her as well. So to start with, we get a bunch of hands for her, and we really get quite a, quite a few. So she's got fists on her in the box. You get a set of these sort of, like, clawing hands almost. You know, they're definitely, like, you know, style posy, uh, you know, fighting stance hands. These are both laterally hinged. But we also get one, it's a left hand, that has a vertical hinge on it, which is kind of odd. But I like the inclusion. We get a singular uh, right trigger finger. We get a singular right thumbs up hand. We get another singular right hand. This is a pointing finger. And then we get two normal gripping hands that both have 
uh, lateral hinges. So she does have a lot of hands. There is a lot here. Most of them are, you know, single use, one sided kind of hands. She's got a couple extra heads. So to start with, you know, this is the head that she comes with in the box. So the stoic, normal ponytail head. We get another head that has the ponytail uh, off to the side. It's the same head just with the ponytail windswept. So if you want to make it look, you know, a little bit more dynamic. This is also, you know, a hair that is up and away from her head. So it's not just that the, the hair has been, you know, rotated. It's not that. It's not something that you could just that easily do. Uh, it is a different sculpt. And then we get another head that has her, this is my favorite of the bunch. The hair is blowing in the other direction. The visor has the targeting reticle uh, on and she is gritting her teeth. I think this is definitely the better head sculpt. It's just more emotive. She's a pretty stoic character to begin with, but I do, I do like that quite a bit. We get a few sort of just, you know, very specific accessories to Mandora. We get her badge, which has some very intricate detail, includes a picture of her, and it's honestly pretty solid. That looks really good, despite, you know, being very small, tough to look at. I'm pretty sure this is the ticket device that she has, you know, like to issue citations. I believe that's what that is. Looks like a calculator, really. And then the, uh, like, the communicator device. It's one or the other. I've either swapped them or not, but I'm pretty sure that's what these are. Uh, very specific to Mandora. And then we also get, which is very specific to her, we get a set of handcuffs that have a real metal chain because, of course, she is intergalactic police, an evil chaser, so it makes perfect sense to give her something like that. And she also has uh, her signature weapon, so she's got that holster on her side, so she's got her boomerang. Because, of course, why not? Somebody needs a boomerang to bash bad guys with. Looks really good. She holds it well. But I also prefer this version that has an effect. So it's a fully translucent piece that fades and then is painted to match the the boomerang. I really like this. I just like being able to get, a, get effect parts. We don't get a lot of effects with ultimates. So when we do get them, and they're good, like this one, I'm pretty happy with it. So she does have a lot of stuff here. Again, it's a lot of very specific stuff to Mandora, uh, but it's... It's very much themed to this character, and I'm pretty happy with the spread here. I like all those hands. I like the heads. I really like the the gritting of the teeth head. That's that's my favorite again. And I do like that we have two different versions of her weapon. Now, the Electro Charger, if you take this as a set, is probably going to be, what, the highlight between the two? I mean, it's hard to, hard to compete. A big vehicle for a line that's never had vehicles and a figure. But... I think this thing is actually pretty cool. There is a lot going on here. It's, of course, very big, and I've already got Mandora on there to give you an idea. It's big. Like, there's there's a lot of space here. It's also very, very wide, too. Like, it's very wide. It's also very long. And, and you know, when you have it on the stand, it it's, has some height as well. It, of course, is meant to accommodate multiple ultimates, you know, at the very minimum, Mandora and lion -O. so it has to be able to support another big figure. I think for the most part, she sits okay on it. I will definitely say that if there was more range at the hips and the knees, you could get her to sit a little bit more naturally, but I also kind of like the way she is right now, and this pose, this pose might be how I have her on this thing permanently, really. So she sits on there okay. There's just, there's definitely some room for improvement when it comes to the figure's articulation to be able to more effectively sit on this thing. That said, I do think it looks pretty solid. There's a lot of a lot of vehicle here. There is, of course, a lot to say about the fact that this is a pretty pricey vehicle, too. It's 150 bucks. You are still getting a good amount of vehicle. I do think it is a little bit on the high side in many ways, but I am pretty happy with the finished product. I think the paint looks good. It's very pristine. Like It looks very factory fresh. There's some good use of translucent plastic on the like the lights on the front, or what would be lights, rather, and like the, the turbine engines here. You've got like scorch marks on the exhaust for, you know, to show actual, actual use. We've got, you know, the tail light. You've got a little, you know, what would be kind of like a storage compartment back here, which we'll talk about here in a minute. There's a storage compartment up in the front. You've got a fully painted dash, and we'll talk about some of the other options that come with that, because there are uh, there's other control panels that you can pop on in a very interesting way uh, for this particular piece. So I think from the from a looks perspective and you know a size perspective, it is pretty solid. It does have some other interesting features though, because it doesn't necessarily need to sit on any kind of stand. And what I mean by that is you can put this thing to different uses. So I was using the stand previously. So you've got this nice little acrylic stand, and there's a port here on the bottom that is also 
used with the kickstand. So you can actually have the kickstand to have it prop up a little bit. It doesn't actually need this though. Uh, it can just sit down flat if you prefer it to do that. And then of course, this isn't just a space motorcycle. This is a multi-purpose motorcycle. So you've got some, some slots down here and you can pop this part off and you can pop this part off and you can pull out wheels. So there is a wheel in the front and one of the ways to get to the wheel in the back is through this storage compartment. I find that this wheel can actually be really, really difficult to pop out at times. You gotta get it and it can be very loud. So there it is. You just gotta sort of reach back in there, but then you've got it on wheels. The wheels do move, they roll, and it's surprisingly well balanced. Like it will sit just fine on the wheels. It's a little bit more tricky when Mandora is actually on it, but it doesn't need the kickstand. It doesn't need the stand. It doesn't need to rest on the engines either. It can just sit on the wheels, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, it's incredibly well balanced. So I do really, really like the options here. You know, it's got a lot of different modes uh, of display. It's likely for me always going to be up on that stand, but I like being able to zoom it around, you know, an ultimate's display and have her uh, pick up a bad guy. So you do have some pretty cool options when it comes to how to display it. And it's for the most part, fairly easy to you know flip it between these modes the stand goes in really well the kickstand uh, is nice and sturdy and then the wheels again are just as balanced as anything because it does not want to really fall over until you hit the weird low spot on my table so it is a pretty cool setup a pretty cool design and this thing also comes with a few accessories too so one thing I mentioned is that this has a little bit of storage and it's really meant for one of the accessories and it's accessory that is specifically meant for Mandora also. So you pop it open and you can pull out, it's kind of a tight fit, but you can pull out the so-called soap gun that she uses when she fights the, the living ooze. So it's got the little canister with the star on it, and then it's just got, you know, it's a silver gun. This is not a bendy wire, but it's very, very pliable, very poseable. And we also get an effect part for this. So you've actually got the soap blast firing out of it. I really, really like this. This is, this is one of those things that, it's not like her signature weapon, of course, but it's one of those things I heavily, heavily think about when I, on the rare chance I have Mandora on the mind. So uh, that's really cool. Uh, it's definitely a fun little accessory, something a little bit, a little bit weird, right? So you've got that when it comes to uh, something for Mandora. And then we've also got a few of these. We've got some control panel uh, displays. And what's interesting is that there are magnets in these and the bike, and they will sit right on there and they're not going anywhere. And I'm very, very happy with that because I was not aware of that. And I thought they were going to just go flying all over the place, but they clamp right in and they are very secure and very tight. So that's really cool. Uh, that's pretty much the only real accessory that this thing comes with for itself. You do have to put the antenna on, but is that an accessory? And then of course uh, we do get this. It's a pretty nifty stand. I do like that. So the electro charger is, is really, really big. It's going to have a ton of shelf presence if it doesn't just absorb all of your shelf space for cats anyway. And it comes with some pretty solid accessories for itself. And of course, one really cool accessory for Mandora, but it has a lot of size, a lot of presence. It moves really well as far as rolling, of course. And then everything that actually works to get all those wheels and the inner workings of this thing while well, working is really, really nicely done and for the most part, pretty smooth. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this with this set, with this pair. I think Mandora is a pretty solid figure. She has some faults, don't get me wrong. I wish the flesh was painted. I wish her torso did a little more and I wish her knees did a little more, but she looks pretty good still. I'm very happy with the looks. I'm happy that she can sit on the electro charger with relative ease. I was really concerned about that and those are kind of gone now. She comes with some pretty solid accessories. I love the fact that we have some of these unique emotive hands for her and this very specific energy effect. The electro charger, is a lot of fun. It looks great. It's sized really well. It's going to dominate your Thundercats display. The mechanisms for moving those wheels works nicely. And then the paint, the details, the sculpt, the use of translucent plastic on this thing really makes it look nice. And it's going to be a really, really cool addition to your Thundercats display. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates Mandora and Electro Charger. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.